on corruption and transnational organized crimes, as well as seeking possibilities of creating new protocols by ONCAD and ORCAD for international action and prosecution of collaborators and perpetrators. Finally, in the same vein, Mr. Chairman, the parliamentary the members also uh, supported a parliamentary mechanism of monitoring and assessing the management of the development aid that can be instituted involving donors and beneficiaries, as well as governments, at least in Go Park and uh, Go Park regions and national chapters. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and distinguished delegates. This is our case for Abna. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Parliamentarians who are active at recent and upcoming world events on anti-corruption. UN Park through UNODC and UNDP in the Pacific find their attendance at this particular go World Conference to seven Pacific MPs. Findings will also assist their attendance at the International Anti-Corruption Conference in Malaysia in September and for the Conference of State Parties at St. Petersburg in November. go Back in Australia will be presenting the work and partnerships with UN Park during this United Nations Uncap Conference. Go Back Australia and Peace, along with some other Pacific MPs, as I mentioned myself included, will be attending the major Australian public sector anti-corruption organisation conference in Brisbane in November. Uh, in 2014, we also saw the establishment of Go Back for Violence, following on from Go Back Kiribati in 2013. We have strong Go Back membership from Fiji and Peace, and hope that a new Go Back chapter will be established there this year along with our route. So as you can see, it's, it's a fairly diverse and concerted effort uh, to go back and show you this doing. Um, I think it's very important that that we realise the diversity of our, our go back needs. There's been much said about grand corruption uh, in many of the sessions that we've, we've discussed over the past few days here. And grand corruption is not a major issue for those of us in the in cities the developing nations of the Pacific, but on the ground day-to-day -day corruption which affects poor people, real poor people, and living in real poor villages, uh, something that is of a concern to us, and how do they, they can be informed about the institutions that they, they can access uh, to ensure that they no longer become victims of that kind of corruption. Corruption is the main instrument of poverty, of terrorism, of everything which is depriving a common man from his fundamental rights. So, it is not the duty of the government officials only or anti corruption authorities only to protect and promote anti corruption activities. It is obviously the responsibility of the elected representative of each region and country and globe. As we always go to our common man, we used to say that we are the saviour of yours. We will provide you all the justice. We will ensure your development and everything what we go to our voters at the time of our elections. But after the election, we do forget everything. So I think it is primarily the responsibility of ours to make this world, this globe, more justified, more transparent, more developed and to provide the basic right to the individuals of every country and every region and to protect our innocent children and women from the act of this barbarism of terrorism of corruption. Those who are indulged in corruption, they are more terrorists because they are depriving the fundamental right of a common man. Finally, with these words, I conclude my speech. And once again, I must congratulate the COPEC Indonesia region, the organizers, those who took active part to provide us this opportunity, and on behalf of Pakistan delegation and on behalf of the Pak delegation, I once again 
Thank you very much for this successful event and successful convention and conference. Thank you very much. Por último, quiero contarles que también en mayo de este año hemos sido invitados junto a otros miembros de OPA, como por ejemplo el, el honorable diputado nacional Manuel Garrido, al Consejo Profesional de Ingeniería Civil para hablar sobre órganos de control en la ciudad de Buenos Aires. Y el 11 de junio, junto con la ONG, que formamos parte, es decir, que es el Secretariado de Buenos Aires, se celebró la Cámara de Diputados Nacional, que tiene sede en Buenos Aires, el Día de la Transparencia Legislativa. Una jornada de todo el día donde pudimos escuchar a senadores y diputados plantear distintas alternativas y soluciones a la corrupción. La semana pasada, el 30 de septiembre, en el marco del séptimo simposio al Piero Spinelli, se hizo un evento sobre la integración regional en un mundo globalizado. Se um, llevó a cabo un panel de COPAC. Este panel habló sobre el rol de los parlamentos. Contó con cuatro diputados, el doctor Garrido, Petri, Arenaza y Cacase, de distintos estados de la Argentina. Y también hubo dos paneles que versaron sobre la elección directa en el Parlamento del Mercosur y la campaña por la creación de la Corte Penal Latinoamericana y del Caribe contra el crimen organizado. Muchísimas gracias. After several years observing the negative impact of corruption, GOPEC has come into realize that corruption is not just undermine the rule of law, it kills. We know where we are going today to bring justice for those who are deprived their rights because of corruption. In doing so, we have noticed some vital ways in dismantling the shield that is being used by the perpetrators of such crime. However, let me also remind you that despite we are global parliamentarians with a global network, we are of course part of the international community. In that sense, we have the obligation to emphasize the work of the international instrument, in particular, the UN Convention Against Corruption, UNCAC, as the tool in combating internet corruption. In other words, we should speak with the same language as the UNCAC has, and we need uh, to be under the umbrella. In the future, GOPAC will seek for more solid and stronger political support from those states that have become parties to the UNCAC. They are the minded holder in crafting international instrument of which they can support the implementation of international cooperation in criminalizing grand corruption. Friends, parliamentarians of GOPAC, this conference is held at a critical juncture. Just as this organization has bloomed since its inception, the sustainability of the work of our global network of parliamentarians is being challenged. We need to secure some funding to ensure that this organization runs well. The financial support provided by the people of Kuwait draws an end. That is why we are in dire need of a new blood to support the core funding of our organization. In such situation, I bear grave responsibility to continuing the work that we have. Within short-term anticipation situation, I will seek the possibilities to establish a satellite office in Indonesia in securing the management of the executive committee as well as the board. In the longer term, we will reach out for more options to diversify the funding. Delegates, this year marks the symbolic year of political will of change. Last month, world leaders gathered in the UN pledging for ambitious goals of the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs. This month, GOPEC gathers parliamentarians all over the world to adopt ways in criminalizing grand corruptors within international context. In the forthcoming December, the international community will address the greatest environmental challenge that mankind ever faced, climate change. These three things have its strong links as they are cross-cutting issues one to another. They represent changes, a push to the global community to transform from poverty to prosperity, from disaster-prone situation to climate res resiliency. All these changes require one fundamental action, 
eliminating corruption whenever it exists and wherever it hides. And we need to do this together. In this respect, let us applaud the newly elected executive committee, whom with them I will drive to go back in strengthening and sustaining the work that we have over the years. Mr. Osei K. Mensa Bonsu from Ghana and Mrs. Paula Berto from Argentina as the Vice Chair. Mr. John Hyde from Australia as the Secretary of the Executive Committee and Mrs. Mary King as the Treasurer. She is not here with us today. And let me also express gratitude to the support of guide and guidance that has been provided by Dr. Nasser Al Sani from Kuwait as the Executive Committee Member at Large and newly elected Member at Large, Mr. Ramit Gojan Takali from Nepal. And of course, Mr. John Williams as the President Emeritus and the Founding Father of GOPEC. I would like also to read the new board members that uh, I have to list from the Secretariat, from APNAC, Honorable Chari Madi Maina from Chad, Senator Mary Claire Mukasine from Rwanda, and from ARPAC, Dr. Mamdush Al Abadi from Jordan, and Dr. Abdullah Buna, Bunuano, sorry, from Morocco, and from GOPEC Latin American and the Caribbean, Dr. Carlos Alberto Perez Cuevas from Mexico, and Mr. Guillermo Mata Benet from El Salvador, and from CPAC, Dr. Nur Hayati alias Gaf from Indonesia, and Tansvi Abu Zahar Ujan from Malaysia, and from NAPAC, Mr. John Williams from Canada. To the board of directors, where all you are respected figures in your national and regional chapters, we only meet in days, but I believe that your dedication to this organization are reflected in the long-standing commitment on anti-corruption that GOPEC has. We will look towards a stronger and sustainable GOPEC in the future. To Mrs. Fernanda Borges and all the audit committee, your general support to audit us has strengthened the governance of the organization and I do hope that more check and balances will be provided by the committee. I congratulate also Mr. Bonsu that during your chairmanship, the board meeting was lively and exuberant. The meeting was full of debates and that you can resolve all things in compromising ways. So, Let's have a part also from Mr. Bonsu. <laughs> Last but not least, I would like also to thank to the GOPEC Secretariat and its CEO, Akash Maharaj, and all the staff members, Dr. Nurhayati Asegaf, and the chair of the steering committee, and of course to the Secretariat of the Indonesian Parliament, Indonesian House of Representatives, Without you, this gathering of all parliamentarians would never be as successful as today.